The transfer portal is going crazy right now for Indiana basketball. Some good and some bad. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked On Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. If you're new here, be sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. If you're coming back for yet again another day, thank you so much for being an everyday or here on the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, there's all sorts of news to talk about in the transfer portal right now for the Indiana Hoosiers. A couple of guys that we're waiting on still, and a couple of guys that we now know the result and it's not going our way. Hey, it happens. That's how this whole process works. We're going to talk about all of that today, starting with Connor Hickman. Then we will go to uh, Ryan Conwell. Then we'll talk about Umar Ballo a little bit more. So some big names that we're talking about here today on the show for Indiana basketball. Appreciate you being here, making this your go-to spot for all things Indiana athletics. And a reminder, YouTube, audio, wherever you're finding us, we're always free and available each and every day. Want to start with a guy that we've talked a lot about on this show and this program, and somebody that we were really excited about and really hopeful that it was going to happen for us in Connor Hickman, the transfer who is literally from Bloomington, um, a guy that is a knockdown three point shooter, a heck of a ball player, somebody that I think Indiana was in on early, but trying to get him on campus. Things kept getting rescheduled. It was starting to lose momentum and and it just it just started losing traction, really, is what happened here. And then he started having some relationships at Cincinnati with the Bearcats. One thing leads to another and boom, Connor Hickman has committed to play for the University of Cincinnati. Well, it is what it is. It sucks. Yeah, it does because this is somebody that I thought was was really going to be an addition to this team if it happened for us. I was not 100% confident. I was really confident, though. I, I was. I thought, and I said to you in an episode, I said, go get this guy. Bring him home. Bring him home. He needs to be here. And uh, that didn't happen for Mike Woodson and the Hooters. And you know what? I don't think it was all that bad. I think that Indiana was definitely interested. They had their visit scheduled. They were doing all of that, right? And then. From what I can tell and from what I'm being told, it just seems like both parties kind of started splitting off and going separate ways. And by no means do I think that Indiana wasn't interested or Hickman wasn't interested. Like, I don't think that's true. I really, really don't. And I disagree with the people that say that that's true. I just think that both parties began to go different ways, right? Kind of like in a in an early relationship where it's like, you know, this just isn't working out. So let's just kind of peel off a little bit and and no hard feelings. I think that's what happened here. And it it hurts because Hickman, I think, was going to be a really good addition. He's a heck of a three-point shooter. He's a heck of a player. I thought he was going to fit into that two-guard role and just be one of your one of your snipers, one of your sharpshooters. I thought that's what he could have been for this team. Well, he commits to Cincinnati. It is what it is. You missed on him, and that is really unfortunate, and I was really hoping to make that happen. And he's not the first one you've missed out on. I mean, there have been targets that we've gone after that have gone elsewhere, but this was really the first big one that we were not able to grab. And that's how it goes, man. And there's so many different factors here, too, with the portal. I mean, yeah, you've got previous relationships, you have other transfers, you have NIL money, you have all these different things that play an impact here. And it could be that Indiana's going after other guys, that they prefer to get other players, better players in their opinion, players that maybe fit the role better, fit on the roster better. And that's why I think right now you have to go get 
the Indiana State guard, Ryan Conwell. And I'm not saying you just have to go get him. I think Indiana is going to get him. And I say going, I say they're actively recruiting. They're pursuing this guy out of the portal. He's somebody from here in the state who played at Indiana State. Yeah, the biggest story in college basketball this year who had their best season since the late 70s, early 80s. Like a team that historically, yeah, has had some good teams, but they have not been good in a long, long time. Then all of a sudden, they found a couple of guys, a couple of players, and now they're really good. And they should have been in the NCAA tournament. They got hosed. And you saw them make a run through the NIT to prove that. So now the Hoosiers have not only turned their focus to him, they've put the pedal to the metal on this guy. And it sounds like it's a mutual thing. It sounds like there's mutual interest here in Ryan Conwell. And I want to talk about him as we go. But this is how the process works. If you're Mike Woodson and this coaching staff, you're not going to hit on every single one. Any coaching staff, you're not going to hit on everybody that you reach out to, and you're not going to get everybody that you wanted. I mean, this isn't the first one that we've missed, but it's not the first one that we haven't, right? You already have Miles Rice coming in from Washington State. I don't want people to forget about that. I know it just happened, but in the world we live in, it's very easy to move on from that news and make it one day news and move on. Do not forget about Miles Rice, who is already here, who is more than likely going to be your starting point guard. Now it seems that the Hoosiers have to go and find that other two guard to play with Trey Galloway. Go find that shooter. Go find that other scorer in the guard room because Miles Rice can do it for you. Absolutely. Trey Galloway. We just don't know, right? We, we've seen it happen against Kansas, but you also see it where he disappears and doesn't score any points. And I don't think as much as we love Galloway and as much as he's been here and as much as he's done for us here in Bloomington, you cannot rely on that anymore, in my opinion. I think you have to go find somebody to bring in, have the confidence, and say, look, Galloway, you're going to be here. You're going to be a part of this squad, but we got to go get a proven guy. We got to go get somebody that's going to do it night in and night out. And look, I think that's what the Hoosiers are doing. They may have missed on Hickman, and he may have committed to Cincinnati, but this Ryan Conwell kid, he's a star. He's a superstar. And I think Indiana's going after him. I think he's interested in Indiana, and I think there's a good chance here, and I want to talk some more about Ryan Conwell, the Indiana State transfer, and man, his stats are just unbelievable. We'll talk about that coming up in our next segment right here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, it's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball is now in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose, doesn't matter. You just hop on there, place a bet, and you're going to get $150 bucks just for being there, right? Can't beat that. On FanDuel. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Look, I've been told that I'm a competitive person, and it's true. I love it. Always have been, always will be. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. Yes, this game, it's addicting. If you haven't played it yet, you're missing out. I mean, I, I play it. My family plays it. We text. We fight on it. Like, it's unbelievable. But Monopoly Go, it, it really is addicting in a good way. You'll be laying in bed at night playing it and staying up a little too late, and you'll be a little bit tired the next day, but it's totally worth it. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big 
money. But the best part is messing with my friends and my family. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties just like Classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just the competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go today, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Welcome back into Locked on Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. If you like the video, like the content, be sure to like the video on YouTube and also subscribe to the channel. And hey, by the way, wanted to let y'all know we have passed 2,200 subscribers. So thank you so much for that. Now you know what the next one is. Let's get to 2,300. If you haven't done that already, be sure you help me out with that. If you're on audio, you can follow on there, hit the notification so you never miss a new episode of Locked on Hoosiers. While we may have missed on Connor Hickman, there's another guy that I think we got to go after, and I think we are going after, and I think we got a good chance to land, and his name is Ryan Conwell. He's the Indiana State transfer. After a breakout season for him and the entire team and program, his stats are, yeah, they're fine. They're okay. Just 16 points, six rebounds, two and a half assists, one steal per game in 34 minutes played. Yeah, the guy's a baller. He can absolutely score and play. 17 points and six rebounds. It's 6.6 points, so just round up for the sake of this argument. Six, 17 points and six rebounds a game. Yeah, see ball, get ball. That's what this guy does. And that's not the best part. Who's your fans? You're going to love these numbers right here. 40% three-point shooting, basically 41, on an average of seven attempts per game. Shot 61% from the floor and 85% from the free throw line. Let me tell you those numbers one more time. 41% from three, 61% from two, and 85% from the free throw line. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good fit to this system to me. Sounds like a guy that Indiana could desperately use in their rotation this coming up season. Absolutely. And it sounds like a similar trend for what Indiana's been doing this entire portal season, going after elite guards and elite shooters. And that's what we have to have. I've told you this and you know this. This is not new information. But Ryan Conwell is new information. And he's also somebody that I think is really, really important for this staff, especially when the Connor Hickman stuff started to tail away. I think the Hoosiers have put all of their attention on Ryan Conwell. And he's not, they're not alone. There's a ton of schools that are interested in this guy. And how could you not be? Score 17 points when he shoots 61% from inside the three point arc. Then when he steps outside the arc, he averages seven threes a game attempted, seven threes attempted per game. And he's knocking them down at a 41% rate. That's absurd. That's insane. That's not, that's not normal, right? That's not supposed to be done. And so you begin to ask yourself the question, okay, can Indiana land him? Does Indiana want him? And how would he fit in this rotation in this roster? Yes, Indiana can absolutely get him because we have the room. We have the spots. We have the availability for a guy like this. And I think we have the ability to say, hey, You're a day one starter. You walk in this door right now, you start for Indiana Hoosiers. For the Indiana Hoosiers, after playing at Indiana State, don't you think this guy would want to step over and play for the big boy program in the state, for the big boy program in the state? Yeah, I think the state school, yeah, I think that he would love to have that opportunity. You also ask, okay, does Indiana want him? Heck yeah, they want him. They absolutely want this guy. Why would they not? Again, a guy playing in the state, a guy that's going to be the best shooter you've had in a long time. He steps in, and I think he starts. And I think it's somebody that the Hoosiers and Mike Woodson and this staff absolutely want. And for anybody that tells you they don't, I think they're wrong. That's just how I feel. I think they're wrong. And I think that Indiana understands what this guy can bring, what this guy can do, and how he can make this roster better. And so then, yeah, how does he fit in this team? How does he fit in the scheme that Indiana runs. Well, kind of like Miles Rice, you give this guy the ball, 
and he can go score. He can make a play. He can do things and just make it happen, even if the play's broken. Indiana didn't have that last year. But guys like him, like Conwell, can do that. He can go get a rebound and push the basketball up the floor in a fast break. He can go crash the offensive glass and get a put-back layup or get fouled and step to the free throw line where he knocks them down 85 times out of 100. That's effective guard play, something we didn't have and something we have to have. And I think Conwell can bring that to you, right? I think this guy is just, he's unbelievable, man. He really is. His stats and the places that he's played and the players that he's played around are just really, really good, man. And his three-point shooting is the thing that highlights, that is highlighted for him. There's no doubt about it. Um, You know, with really, when you look at him and you watch some of his film, I was doing that last night. He's got two things. He's going to shoot threes or he's going to get to the basket. Fine by me. That's cool. That's why his percentages are so high when he gets steps inside the three-point arc is because he's not your killer mid-range guy. I think Miles Rice could be that. But Conwell is, he's either going to bury it from deep or he's going to put it on the floor, get around you, and he's going to get to the rack and he's going to lay it in, get fouled or whatever. That's what you want from one of your guards. And that's kind of what a point guard shooting guard could be I think he would be more of your your shooting guard um, where he's going to step in and he's going to be a part of the offense but he can handle the basketball same thing with Miles Rice you're getting ball handlers here you're getting shooters here which I know Rice his three-point shooting was not good but you're getting playmakers which is what we have to have I love this kid man I love Ryan Cottonwell just watching him and in the the potential that he could be what and what he could be here. I mean, it's just it, it really is exciting to to see because not only is he good, he still has room to improve, which is something I'm I'm I've been telling you about that I'm really curious on when it comes to Mike Woodson and the staff. You start bringing in some of these guys from the portal who, yeah, they're proven, they're good. We know that. But can you make them even better? With Conwell, I mean, it's really tough for me to say where he should get better. Maybe like I said, on those mid-range jumpers trying to, you know, cross over step backs and like difficult shots just to create his own open mid-range jumper. But like that's that's really, really nitpicky by me. And I'm not expecting that by any means. Miles Rice is, yeah, let's shoot the ball a little bit better outside of the free throw line. And I think he can and I think he will, but Indiana may not need that from him if you go and get a Ryan Conwell. I think the Hoosiers are in on this. I think they're very in a very, very good spot. And Conwell is over the top interested in the Indiana Hoosiers. You bring him in, he's another day one starter. And that would be two that you bring in through the portal. And oh yeah, don't forget about Umar Ballo, who is still on a hot streak, who is still on the hot board for this Indiana staff, for this Indiana team, and somebody you should still remember and should still know about this Indiana squad. We'll talk about Umar Ballo and what the latest news is on him when we come back here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Look, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you cannot find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So, if you're looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. Because on LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Yeah. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Final segment here on the show. Appreciate you being here on Locked on Hoosier. Shout out to my everydayers, those of you that come back each and every day. Make this a part of your daily routine. And of course, make it your first listen each day. And every day, 
Tons of portal updates for Indiana basketball. We've talked about Connor Hickman, who has committed to the University of Cincinnati. We've talked about Ryan Conwell, the Indiana State transfer, who the Hoosiers are very much in on. And a guy that I know you haven't forgot about, but I just wanted to talk a little bit more about, an Umar Ballo, a guy that, man, I'm hearing really, really good things about Umar Ballo because of what, basically what, he's saying and what his people are saying about his visits and he's been in he's been in Bloomington and from everything I've heard from everything I'm being told everything I read same thing you're doing it's going really well and it went really well and I think there is so much potential and momentum here that it's it's okay for you to start to get a little excited about this and you should be because you're bringing in Miles Rice. You're hopefully bringing in a guy like Conwell. And if you bring in an Umar Ballo, oh my God, it's a, t- a completely reset of the roster, which is what you had to do. And I think Umar Ballo is the difference maker. We've talked about how you lost a seven-footer to the NBA. Guess what? You'd be bringing in another one who's probably going to have NBA draft recognition who's going to be somebody that the NBA wants to take a chance on and he would come here to Bloomington and be that instant difference maker and it sounds like he's really interested and it sounds like that Indiana is over the top interested and they should be because of what he can bring to this team and we've talked about the stats and what he's done and how good of a scorer and rebounder that he is and and some of his strengths and weaknesses that he should work on right the finesse is something we probably need to get a little bit better at but man just being a physical unit inside he's just going to be a bully down there on both ends of the floor and I love it because we didn't have a bully last year I love Khalil Ware and I love Malik Renew but neither one of those guys were bullies in the lane let's just be honest Ballo on the other hand yeah nobody wants to go up against that he'll just put you on the floor he's bigger and stronger than you what are you going to do about it that's what Umar Ballo brings to any team especially and hopefully for this Indiana squad. But everything I've heard is that this has gone extremely well. And I would be, I'll just say it, I'll say it like it is. I would be shocked if he doesn't end up here. I I really do believe that. I would be shocked if Umar Ballo does not end up as an Indiana Hoosier. Just given what has happened already, the, the fact that Indiana was in on him, early and often that he's visited that it went really well that all things considered I mean it's 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 been a really good time for him here I just think it would be crazy if it doesn't work out now with all the other teams that are involved here this is not done this is not over until there is a commitment here it's not done and and look a lot of you have been asking is it a bad sign if we don't get a commitment right after his visit I don't think it's a bad sign, but I wouldn't take it as a good sign. And let me tell you what I mean by that, because I know that's a little wishy-washy there. Yes, you want a commitment. From anybody that visits, you would love a commitment when they leave, because more than likely, that's going to be the most time, that's going to be the highest part of their time, that's going to be the time they're thinking about it the most, and that's probably when they're going to feel the best about it. And if they walk off campus and they don't commit, then, yeah, then you have to start worrying about other folks coming in and trying to recruit him, which is going to happen for the number one player in the transfer portal. But I don't think that means it's just over and it's never going to happen for us if Ballo doesn't commit right away right now. I don't think that's the case. I just think that, yeah, if you have that chance, getting that commitment before he walks out of here is a huge deal because other folks are coming, man. We've read you all that. I mean, there's 30 teams that want this guy. He's the number one player in the portal. He's a seven foot monster. Why would you not want him? But Indiana's in a really good spot. And imagine, imagine if you go and get Umar Ballo, you already have a top 15 portal player, Miles Rice. You'd bring in the number one portal player in Umar Ballo. Conwell is up there. I mean, I'd put him at a top 20, top 30 player in the transfer portal. Plus, you're bringing in Bryson Tucker, who's a top 15, top 20 high school player, on top of what you're bringing back in Malik Renu, Trey Galloway, and so many others. You have a good team in McKenzie and Baco. You've got a legitimate roster. That's a competitive roster more than last year's team. And I loved last year's roster. It just didn't work out. This would be a dominant roster. Then at that point, 
because Ballo's a starter, Conwell's a starter, Rice is a starter. Your other two are Mbako and Renew. Boom. That's a that's a heck of a starting five. Miles Rice, uh, Conwell, you'd have uh, probably, what, Mbako at your three, a big three, but you'd put Malik Renew at four and Ballo at five. Boom. There you go. Then it's time to go find some death pieces. Try to go find some guys that are effective off the bench, especially at the guard spot, and then back up big men because you need all of that coming in. Well, and I forget about Bryson Tucker. So maybe my opinion, my feeling is that Tucker doesn't start immediately, but could work himself in at some point. So there's we can have that conversation too. That was just kind of shooting from the hip, and and that stuff you got to figure out along the way. But that's a good problem to have. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a really good problem to have. And I think that's where Mike Woodson and the Hoosiers have to go after this. But Ballo is in. I'm telling you, Ballo is in. And I would be shocked, overly shocked, and completely disappointed and blindsided if Ballo doesn't end up here in Bloomington. I feel that way. That's what my people are telling me. That's what people are saying. And I feel that way that Ballo in Indiana are like this right now. You just got to get it locked down, get a commitment, and, man, get that guy back to campus, get a signature, do whatever you got to do. Pay the man if you have to, which we will. Do whatever it takes to get Umar Ballard because he is a difference maker for this team. He's the number one player in the portal, and if you don't get him right now, somebody else will. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here. Big episode today with all the portal updates. We'll continue to talk about this as we go. It's a big, big week and a big couple of weeks for Indiana basketball. I appreciate you being here. It's a big week for the show as well. Be sure you like this video. Share it around with your family and friends, all your Hoosier fans. Make sure that you're watching Locked on Hoosiers. Subscribe to our channel. We just passed 2,200 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. Let's go to 23, shall we? And if you're on audio, follow us on there. Turn on notifications. You'll never miss a new episode of Locked on Hoosiers. Who knows what the updates will be tomorrow? Guess you have to come back and find out. Until then, Hoosier fans, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.